Hey everybody, this episode of the R&R &R Show is brought to you by Floodgate Games and their new real-time cooperative game Skyrockets, which I've got to say is just excellent. If you are looking for a cooperative game with a ton of tension where players really have to work well together to succeed, what we're trying to do is put on an amazing magical fireworks show by playing cards from our hands that allows us to flip sand timers and keep the sands flowing. Because if any of these sand timers run out, then we lose points. And if too many of them run out, we lose the game. This is actually a sequel to the phenomenally successful Kites, also from from Floodgate Games. And I gotta say, folks, where Kites was a nice, lightweight, gateway, family-friendly game, Skyrockets really levels up the gameplay by including dozens of different scenarios you can play through in kind of a little mini-campaign that add a lot more depth and complexity. This is like Kites, taken from a gateway game and turned into a gamer game. And, as you can see from Kimberly, uh, pulling off the amazing feat of playing a solo game of this thing. It is just fun, fast, frenetic, and gorgeous. And if you actually want to check out Kimberly's video after you're done with the R&R &R show, there's going to be a leak for it down in the show notes, folks. It was a blast. So, uh, that is Skyrockets from Floodgate Games. Thank you for sponsoring the show. And now, uh, let's go. And yes, let's go. Friends, this is the r and r, &R Show. My name is Ruel Gaviola, joined as always by my co-hosts, Ray and Chris. And we've got a very special guest today, Robert Geislinger from Arcane Wonders. Hello, everybody. Welcome. How's it going? Well, there. That's, hey. that's Robert right there. Hey, yeah. everybody. How's Never heard of him. <laughs> I was pointing off screen. I was pointing to you. You, you watching this. You're Robert Geislinger. You never knew. <laughs> we are all Robert Geislinger. Yes. We are all. It's like that little that little door that you go through in being John Malkovich. Being Robert Geislinger. Ooh, <laughs> very nice reference, Chris. Very nice. <laughs> Uh, before we get going with our most anticipated games of 2024, just want to shout out our sponsor, um, Floodgate mm -hmm. Games. Uh, we've got, uh, you just saw Richard talking about uh, fireworks, or I mean, not fireworks, uh, Skyrockets. Um, I was thinking fireworks, I don't know why, but uh, Skyrockets, and I've got it here on the table, as Kimberly mm -hmm. uh, shown in her video, it is very much like kites, but I feel like kites the next level. Um, it's very similar where you're taking cards, you're going to play them in order to flip these sand timers, right? And and what Richard pointed out, what I love about the most are, are these cards right here. These are different scenarios. Kites did not have these. Kites was more of a gateway experience. But here, you're going to be going through different, um, almost like a campaign, little missions. I will not spoil these. Um, hopefully, you all check it out. And um, that is from our sponsor, Bloodgate Games. I want to thank them for that. Um, but today, we're talking about this year, 2024. And if you want to know more about Leap Years, folks, be sure to click the links below because Robert is a <laughs> he's a wealth of knowledge when it comes to Leap Years in 2024. Is it is it technically a leap year? You're gonna find out by clicking the link below and going to our extended <laughs> edition of the show. Yeah, don't don't just Google it. Go watch the yes, half hour yeah. pre show uh, to find out. Well, while, while yeah. we all discover it, <laughs> yeah. we all discovered it together and and really the community friends of the discovery. And people. Yes. Yeah. We 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 all feel like I feel like 2024 is off to a really great start because we've all now bonded. And you can also hear though some some little things about uh, Arcane Wonders uh, upcoming titles as well, which is also you can. Less Less important than the, than the leap years. You can but, also you know, hear a wonderful really joke about 2024. Hey. Oh, so what are you is still it? doing here? Go watch the extended edition and we'll be back here when you get to it. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Best joke ever, folks. I'm not going to spoil it, but uh, check that out. Um, why don't we get things rolling into um, the, the list here? And again, get to know Robert a little better, but folks, by clicking on that link for that extended edition, we had a great conversation and learned many mm -hmm. things as well. So these are the games that we're looking forward to the most this year. And we're going to have uh, Chris kick things off our top 10. You've got number 10, my friend. All right. I got number 10. Uh, and I didn't even know that, that uh, Robert, you're going to be the guest this week. So there's no collusion here, but I think this is an arcane wonders title. If I've, if I've got my own personal order, uh, right. Uh, it, it's something that I wanted the moment I played the original game because I'm a super cheap cheapy boy and i and i'm not a deluxe vacation boy <laughs> and i was like i want i want something less i want something smaller <laughs> and now i'm getting what i want this is our number 10 it's foundations of metropolis yes um, scared away robert 
I there thought I is. had the box. I think he was looking for Yeah, he was looking for it. Um, Foundations of Metropolis. This is just Foundations of Rome. But uh, if you don't want all the minis, basically, mm-hmm. what that's 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 what this is. Foundation of Rome is is a really solid game. Oh, um, man, I don't that's have... me in that video. Oh, <laughs> there you go. Look at that. Um, I don't have room for Foundations of Rome on my shelf. I just did a purge what? and I was like, oh, no. I got, I'm just running out of so, so, so much room, but, and, but I've, I've wanted this sort of pared down, uh, retail edition, which you can get the gameplay of Foundations Rome, uh, w- without, without having to spend, uh, a, a bunch of money. Like it, it, the, the deluxe copy is nice. It, the minis are super nice. A lot of people will disagree, w- disagree with me and say that you, they love the table presence and that the table presence is the reason why, uh, it gets to the table as much as it does and is that sort of like really nice mid gateway game for people. And I, and I, and I see those, those uh, arguments, but for me, I want something that's, that's streamlined. I don't need the minis personally. And so I was so, so thrilled to, to hear about this, uh, this upcoming, this upcoming game, because it's, it's far more likely to be able to fit on my, fit on my shelves in a very small space. Uh, and, oh. and, and I'll be able to take it places too. If we, you know what I mean? Like hey. I, I travel a lot for 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 board games. <laughs> hey, I would like to point out we made a custom carrying bag for. That's um, fair. That's, that's right. Fair. You may, there is the custom <laughs> carrying case. That's true. <laughs> just you just so you know, the one thing that was important to me to carry over is with Foundations of Metropolis. You are still able to open that after the first time you get it all put together. You can open yeah. that box, take a tray out, hand it to a player, and just get going. That makes me pretty, so pretty, excited. Yeah. yeah. Cause that's that's huge, right? Like that's why I love sort of deluxified games too, is that that tray component and the setup component and the fact that that's in there. I didn't know that was in there. And so that that makes me even more excited about it. Like setup and being aware of the user experience and getting it to the table is something that I think every publisher should consider. And if you do it, more people will play your game and it will be talked about more. And and, and I just think that's that's fantastic. That makes me really excited. Oh, I'm glad I put it on my list. That's yeah. perfect. So that's my number 10. <laughs> our, our collective number 10, uh, Foundations of Metropolis. Great so even though call. you didn't put any Arc- Arcane Wonders on this list, Robert, well, at least you got <laughs> yeah. I, I got one in there for you. <laughs> Un- unknowingly. Yes. I I love uh, Foundations of Rome, and um, I'm super excited about this as well, Chris, uh, because it's mm-hmm. going to get the games uh, into more people's hands because it deserves yeah. to be played. It's a wonderful game. Um, I believe it's uh, Emerson's game, right? Emerson uh, yep. uh, had designed it. Masucci. Yeah, Masucci, Masucci and, yeah. Uh, designer of uh, Century Spice Road and a, a lot of great titles. Uh, it's. I remember when I first played Foundations of Rome, I was thinking it was going to be one type of experience, but it became this experience where I want to play this with my wife, Michelle. Like, I know she would love this. It's tile lane. It's really, you know, got that really cool um, uh, engine uh, to it. And it's just a wonderful game. And again, this is the type that it's going to get into more people's hands. And I'm very, very excited about that. Yeah. It gives me like a more strategic acquire vibes for those who are interested in the gameplay and haven't, yeah. haven't played it and have played acquire. Um, I just like the, the way you're, you're controlling the board and controlling the lots and then upgrading and having different, uh, different buildings that you can upgrade into, depending upon what sort of tracks you want to manipulate. If you want yes. income, if you want points, I think it's, uh, yeah. re- really solid. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited for it to, to be, to, to have this more, more, uh, this cheaper version for cheapy old me. Yeah. Who doesn't <laughs> need it, it it like, I'm not going to say it's cheap. My only contribution <laughs> is that it's all right. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You heard it here. You heard it here first. Man, it's all right. It's all right. I'd like to change my stance on it as well. Man, it's all right. At any time now. I knew it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. All right. Great. Um, well, on that note, let's move on to number uh, nine on our collector list, and we're going to turn it over to Ray. All right, so my number nine on this list is a game called Aqua Biodiversity in the Oceans. It's not the Aqua that went up on Kickstarter, I think, last week. This is a game that we'll be releasing at the op in February, which is the next game from the Heat Pedal to the Metal team, which is very exciting. If you didn't know, that's actually a father-son design duo, and Aqua is based on the son's desire to be a marine biologist when he was a kid, which I feel like we all went through that phase. So it's a very relatable concept to me. Uh, Aqua is a tile lane game. It's got sort of a 3D through like double layer stacking element, kind of like Acropolis, if you're familiar with that game from Hachette. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's a little, I find it a little bit tighter, a little bit crunchier than Acropolis. 
Uh, you're going to be drafting these colored coral tiles from the center. You'll see each little hexagon has got three different colors of coral on them. You're going to be putting them together, kind of like in Cascadia, creating these clusters of colors. And once you have a cluster of color, you can then attract small creatures to your reef, like crabs and little clownfish. And then once you have a collection, a little cluster of small creatures, you can attract larger creatures. And as you can see with the tagline, the biodiversity in the ocean, there's this fun sort of scientific tie-in where if you want to attract a larger creature, you can have more than one of a certain type of small creature beneath it because it's got to have enough biodiversity to sustain these larger animals, which I think is really fun. Um, and I'm excited about this because tile laying is a super accessible genre to begin with, but I do like that this game does feel it, it is quite crunchy, quite thinky because of that 3D stacking element. There's not that many turns in the game. You do really have to make the most of the time that you have in the game. But that said, it also comes with multiple game modes, including a family friendly version and a solo version. So if you like tile laying, you like the theme, but that extra crunch kind of freaks you out a little bit, there is a family friendly version to it as well. And it also just shows the um, like design range of the heat pedal to the metal team. This is such a departure from what heat is, which I think is really fun. It's gonna be really cool to see where they as a team go. And we're very honored from the op to be part of that like next step and that journey. And yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about Aqua. It's also coming out in February. So it's the first thing that popped to mind. We're, we're getting really excited for it here at the op. So Looks yeah, that's funny. Aqua Biodiversity in the Oceans. Yeah. So it's coming in February, eh? That's, yeah, that's it's coming soon. soon. It's, really it's, it's, yeah, oh, it's gorgeous. That. Isn't I, it beautiful? I, yeah, I, I'm really excited about this one as well, Ray. Um, I, in my house, Tile Lane, that's that's our jam. That is our mechanism, yeah. our to-go uh, mechanism. You know, the one we always want to play are games that uh, lay tiles. And this one, um, I may have a uh, early copy of it uh, somewhere here. Ooh, Maybe I didn't I'm not know supposed that. to say that, that's but exciting. I just yeah. So I've taken nice. a look at it, and I'm very excited about this. Uh, you had mentioned Acropolis. I think it has <clears throat> similar yeah. uh, feel to it, but a totally different game. And I think you're right, Ray. Yes. I feel like this is the crunchier of the two. So uh gamers uh you know if you like acropolis and you want like a step up from that i think uh, you might want to look into this um and also like you said it has a family friendly version and i i love that i love that when games do that yeah. right especially things that you might not be able to play with your family um you know take a step down and take out a couple of things and all of a sudden like uh, cascadia i think is a great example you have all those yeah. scoring options they have the family version which is hey it's just super easy to score and you don't have as many things to uh, keep track of. So yeah, Aqua, uh, I'm, I think it's a great, uh, great choice for this list. Yeah, absolutely. I love games where you can kind of make them be whatever you want them to be. This can be a solo mm -hmm. experience. This can be a crunchy gamers tile laying game, or it can be a family friendly gateway yeah, game. Absolutely. I, I like that about it. Um, yeah. I don't know much other than what you said, but I like the fact that it has that family friendly mode. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm hoping in 2024, we see a lot more of that. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. totally they, agree. While they might have something for the the crunchier advance, that they have a mode to be able to play, especially coming out of where we're at now with so many people that you know might have picked up TikTok viral games during sure, the yeah. pandemic years mm -hmm. that are looking for things that are just a little more accessible. Yeah, yeah are, absolutely. And it creates, I find, I mean, I, I've talked about this on the channel before. I'm the designated teacher in my group, and I'm often teaching people who aren't, you know, completely brand new to board games, but aren't super into the hobby. And I love that I can bring a game to the table that's at an entry weight and then be like, okay, we like this. Now let's do this again. New, like the basics that you already know, but we're going to add on another layer that really is helpful as like the designated teacher to get people into the hobby. Every time you have to wipe the slate clean and teach a whole new set of rules, you lose a lot of people. So I love games mm. that have that incremental difficulty built into it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, this is really yeah. good. And then if you're, if you're used to playing games too, you know to just skip that and go right to yeah, the exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Totally. totally. Yeah. Or if you just don't have time anymore, you know yeah. to go with it. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Okay. Uh, so great. So we got 10, 9. Let's go to number 8. And oh, that looks like it's me on a deck. So uh, this game, actually, uh, Richard has it on his uh, extended list where he talked about a bunch of games that he's excited for. And this made his list. Um, and you know, I, I just, I've got two words. Well, I've got one, two, three, four, five words to say. Steve Finn, <laughs> Phil Walker Hardy. Two of my favorite designers. Ooh. Yeah, Steve Finn, so, uh, Phil Walker Hardy. I know Hardy. what you're talking about now. Yeah, this is no, our no, collective number eight. It's a game called Cities. And 
I love Phil Walker Harding, praise be. I also love Steve Finn. Their games are <laughs> phenomenal. And, you know, we're talking about accessible games. I feel like those their games are very accessible. And this one, Cities, based on what I've read, again, there's no videos out yet or whatever, just the, the standard BGG page. Um, you're looking at it, and it's got tile lane, and it feels like Baron Park, but with the Baron Park expansion where you start doing, like, the 3D stuff to it. And you bring in Steve Finn... And he's always got those 20 to 30, maybe 40 minute games that uh, I think Richard calls him the king of filler games. And I, I tend to agree with that. I always love uh, Steve Finn's games. Uh, he does a bunch of stuff with Pencil First and uh, Cities. Uh, it's a city building game. You're going to draft projects and put them in your play area and then you're going to match them up. Um, so it's resource a draft uh, um, resource management as well. But... You know, those names alone, Stephen, Phil Walker Harding, that's all I need to hear. And I'm in, immediately interested in it. And, and some, uh, Richard goes into way. a little more in depth uh, on his uh, video. So be sure to check that out. Um, yeah, I'm I'm all about it. I mean, you could, I mean, there's two pictures here and I'm still, I'm so fired up about it. I mean, I don't know who did the art, but another thing that got me excited, it's from DeVere. And DeVere, they've been putting out a lot of great stuff these days. They've so. been doing really great stuff they, recently. They have. So DeVere that's, don't miss. Yeah. I have an interesting question about this one. Uh -huh. I and mean, it's going to be slightly self-serving. But I'm curious. Oh. Ha have you played this or anything? No, I have not. No, this is... Yeah, I'm just anticipating. Most anticipated, yep. Just uh, just on the, the surface, I'm wondering how it compares to World Wonders. Ah, yeah, yeah that's that's a good question. I'm, you know, I'm I'm curious like, to see that as well. I love anything Devere puts out, honestly. Yeah, yeah. I, I'd, be, yeah. I'd be curious because mm -hmm. this seems it, like a game right up my alley. Yeah, it looks like it's not confined to to a set board. At least, mm -hmm. like with World Wonders, you have that a, a little bit. You have those restrictions of the board and yeah. where the river is, right? Right. Um. Yeah, so I'm just, just curious because I, yeah, I love that brain. style. Obviously, I've done two yeah. city building games. I love yeah. anything in city building like this. This is probably an auto buy for me too. Agreed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's why it's our number eight on our collect list of most anticipated games of 2024. Cities from Devere Games. Okay, um, let's turn it over to our special guest, Robert. You've got our collective number seven. What you got for us? What do I have for you? Uh oh. I believe that I have. <laughs> so, oh, you know what? I, I I can put the name up first, and then we can have you talk about. It. How's that? Why don't you put the name up? Here's the number seven sure. on our collective list. <laughs> Kabuto it is. Sumo. It's Kabuto yeah, okay. Suma Sakura Slam. Nice. That's what I thought it was, but y'all asked me this stuff so many days before. And gotcha. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So Kabuto. So this I only found out about recently and i love kabuto sumo whoops weirdly the reason i love kabuto sumo is a that it's these bugs going at it in the mm -hmm. sumo wrestling which i just i love the concept of that but also the first time i saw kabuto sumo the first thing i remembered is my favorite game at like when i was a kid at chuck e cheese and then older at D D dave and busters yes you know the game where you put the quarter in Oh yeah, yeah. And then you try yeah. to knock the other quarter down. Game. Like you push it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, "Is this just that in a board game? This is fantastic." Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. So I'm I'm very excited about this because this is not a expand. This is this is not an expansion. It's a standalone in the oh, series. Oh, I didn't know it was a standalone. I didn't know that either. I assumed it was, assumed it was an expansion. expansion. Right? No, no, no. This is a standalone. But um, wow. Everything in my life revolves around AW. Much in the way <laughs> Airland and Sea and Spies lies in, where it's a standalone. So it's yeah, backwards right. and and it's backwards and frontwards compatible. Yeah. So you can still use them together. Um, I th this one, and I again, I don't know much about it other than what Joe over at All Plays has shown. Um, this one is on a square board as opposed to the original was on that circle. On the circle. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, I believe what they're going for this time is more American style wrestling. Okay. Ah. So it's got like poles or something on the side. On the ropes. But again, you get them on the ropes. That same sort of thing. <laughs> um, and they really haven't released much other than I know this is coming to Kickstarter and coming yeah. out this year. Yep. Um, but you're still gonna be the you're still gonna be the bugs. Um, but they're going to have the new platform, new characters. There's going to be pillars, is what the, the quarters were, and then all new powers. The other thing I loved about this is, again, like Ray was talking about at Aqua, is this always had that family-friendly 
version two, yeah. mm -hmm. where you don't need to use those powers. You can just flip it over. Everyone gets their set of pieces to put on and just use those. You don't have to worry about all the other rules set. And honestly, from what they've shown on this, I think I like this art oh, even better. I think it's the oh, color yeah, scheme. Really great. Mm. It's Something beautiful. about yeah, color this scheme cover is, yeah. is so much better to me. I love the coloring on this. But I just I love I loved the whole bug thing. Like the yeah. whole bug going at it. Because in my head, I can't help, even though you're pushing wooden pieces around, I just can't I just I can't help but picture the little bugs like Going I love, at I love, they have little booties too. They have like their right? little bug <laughs> cheeks on the on the pieces. That's my favorite part. Yeah, it is just <laughs> such a clever game. And the moment I heard there was going to be more Kabuto Suma, I was like, "Sign me up!" Yes, I'm in. Yeah, I was yeah. super excited about this one. I yeah. I still to me this is still my number two all play game, but it is definitely Ooh, my. Wait, number what's your number one? one? Yeah, Mountain Goat. Mountain Goats forever. Uh, that's, that's a good one. Forever. That's a good one. Very nice. Uh, but Kabuto Suma. Definitely my number two, and this is my my number seven here. Nice. Our, our collection. Yeah, our collection I completely seven. agree with the, that cover. It's 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 so, so much better. I I will die on the hill of like we need to try other color palettes as an industry because it makes you stand out on the shelf. Like genuinely, yeah. like I bought Whirling Witchcraft because I was like I haven't seen a pink and purple board game yes. ever. Yes. I've never seen a pink like a bright pink and purple right. game like that. At least there probably was one, but that was the one that first one that came across my shopping experience and that was enough for me to pick it up off the shelf and this i think uh, yeah. it's yeah. just a more eye-catching cover this is the yeah. sort of game where if i put it on my shelf i'm not going to want to put it in sideways i'm going yeah, to want to put it show this it direction so that it shows yeah it's just so yeah. beautiful <laughs> yeah yeah the cherry blossoms are awesome i agree i do i just reorganized the board game shelves and like they're color co coded and <gasps> we're severely Wait. lacking in pink i'm severely color lacking in pink what? Oh, hold, yeah. on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You color, color coordinate your, your game? I do that too, and I get so really? much crap for it. I am so Why? happy I found someone else. Not my shelf. My, my real shelf downstairs. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. color coordinate it, and I get a lot of flack for it because they're like, how do you find the games? I'm like, well, I think in my head, and I'm like, it's an orange game. Let me go to the orange section because I'm a visual learner. <laughs> yeah. I get so much. People get so mad about it. No I way. feel like I found, I, I feel very uh um validated yeah. that you also or, or people people say that their argument is how do you find the games uh you know what games you, you, you own and you're not it? a colossal hoarder okay and hold you on, on the and shelf you visualize yourself. it and you find okay. it on your shelf I have a <laughs> color. that's uh. not gonna work first off julie organized our games alphabetical by oh, see, that's, 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 that that's, that's my brain too so i always had a system of if it fits it sits Seriously, yep. fair, yeah, because fair. I need I have like 5,000 board games, yeah. Oh my god, yeah, at some point, not gonna work. yeah, <laughs> yeah, color will work because then you cull the ones you that you that were in the back I've of that never dusty called shelf. a game in my life, and I will never call a game. <laughs> wow, okay, great, so you just don't play it then. <laughs> there is a game that I once rated as a one as the worst game ever made, and I yeah. still love having that game in my collection. <laughs> I love that, that's great. Nice. Wow. Yeah, I, I'm I'm along the lines of Robert as well, where I just, wherever the games fit, I'll, I'll do it. But I do turn them around, yeah. you know, just to make some of them look nice and neat. But, well, the thing wow. is, you got to do it that way, because otherwise you're not maximizing that shelf space. Exactly, right? You get an extra game right there. That's yeah. however many games it is uh, extra. So I don't know. No, you got to go color coordinated. Just see the beautiful it's rainbow. So it's peaceful. No, I do like it's, that uh, aspect of it. Yeah. It's, it's peaceful. It's so gorgeous. It's yeah. curated. And then you've taken the time to curate it in like an aesthetic way that also like makes it the set piece of your home. If you, if it, you love board gaming wow. and you want to show it off, you want to show off like a beautiful curated selection that will yeah. get people excited. You don't want to you don't want to bring them into Auntie Helen's hoarder den. Uh, <laughs> I in fact like, do want to be in Auntie Helen's hoarder den. <laughs> I love that like, show. When you I have do to love add that a show. Game and you have to <laughs> shift everything down. That's a pain. Yeah. But See, there's the reason that. you shouldn't organize like this. Thank then you, you buy right? one game and you have to uh, redo the whole yeah. thing. Well, that's uh, that's Welcome a problem with alphabetical. TV on the <laughs> right. well, the it's are more, any more flexible. organization system. Yeah. It's yeah. not yes. unique to the color system, yeah. but that is how Colors I discovered it's more flexible. Just how much of a bias this industry has towards blue and green and yeah. gray. Right. Like, love it. That's beautiful. Great. But like when I was trying to color coordinate, I got so excited when I found Whirling Witchcraft. I had like a, a purple <laughs> mm -hmm. game, not a game, a little purple, a purple game. I was so mm -hmm. excited. Nice. <laughs>
<laughs> anachrony. Another reason anachrony is great. Oh, there you yeah. go. That's a great yeah, couple absolutely. Game. All right. So uh, having given so you all So way to go, Kabuto some... Sumo. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Speaking, that's, that's a stunning game. Speaking of shelving tips, no. Uh, we're going to move on to our number six. Uh, we're going to have Richard. I don't think he's going to talk about how he shelves this game, but he's got a number six game most anticipated. For I'm here. not watching. Let's turn it over yeah. to Richard. <laughs> turn it on. All right. So far, so good. First of all, uh, Robert, let me give a uh, delayed welcome to the channel. It's great to have you on. Obviously, I'm a huge fan of what you do and Arcane Wonders and all of that. And uh, please, 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 please tell me if you haven't already talked about it based on Chris's entry for Foundations of Metropolis, will it include the co-op mode from Rome? Please, please, please. Oh, I hope so. Um, but anyway, what else did you guys talk about? Oh, Ray, Aqua. I have already gotten a chance to play this uh, back when I visited the op office uh, when we were passing through Southern California back in, geez, feels like a lifetime ago now. Uh, because, folks, in case uh, you didn't know, my wife Jane and I are on an epic half-year-long road trip uh, down the Baja Peninsula. We're in Laredo right now, just kind of camped out in a really unassuming uh, uh overgrown parking lot basically we spent the last three weeks just bumming it on the beach uh, with no power no water uh, boondocking it's called and we decided we needed some really nice hot showers and we needed to do some laundry <laughs> so we're right in the middle of Laredo right now and um, had a not such a great night's sleep, but we're ready to hit the open road later this afternoon. Probably by the time you folks are watching this, we will have already headed back down to La Paz as we continue our epic trip. Anyway, though, for, sorry, folks. Um, I was talking about what everybody else talked about. And, Ray, Aqua is phenomenal. It's so gorgeous. It's such a fun, fast-playing little double-layer tile layer, double-decker tile layer. I absolutely love it. So much so that it's going to be covered on the channel, folks, in February. Amy and Maggie, they've got a copy of it, and they'll be doing a run-through. And actually, Ray, uh, you're in luck. Your next one, your number four on the list, Amy and Maggie are going to be doing a run-through for that on the channel as well. Uh, Amy and Maggie are going to be back in a big way in 2024, folks. Very, very excited. But anyway, what else was there? Oh, um, Robert, uh, Kabuto Sumo, uh, Sakura Slam. I have to admit, I don't know that much about this one. It's pretty in your in your face, head to head. But I've always heard good things, including from Ruel. And Ruel, cities. Oh, man, great minds think alike. I knew it because that one made my personal top 10 of the list as well. What a phenomenal design duo on that. I cannot wait. And folks, here's the deal. If you're a subscriber to the channel, you probably already know I've done my personal top 10 most anticipated games for 2024. And I didn't want to just repeat myself here, so I'm breaking with what the rest of the gang is doing. I'm going to be telling you about expansions, board game expansions that I am super excited about, cannot wait to get my hands on. So, for our combined list, number six has to go to... Ancient Knowledge, um, what was it? Oh, uh, Heritage. And here's the deal, folks. Ancient Knowledge came out in 2023, and it is on my short list of games I have not played yet that could punch their way into the top 10 best of the year, because I've heard nothing but amazing things about it. I have to admit, I passed on covering Ancient Knowledge because it comes with like about a half a dozen screw you, take that, steal stuff from each other cards, and they're like, oh, well, I guess I'm just going to pass on this cool little compact um, civilization card game even though the gameplay looked absolutely brilliant and everybody else was raving about it. But then the folks at Yellow told me, you can just take those cards out and it doesn't have to balance at all. I'm like, no, I missed it. I've got to play this game. But uh, when I found out that the Heritage expansion is going to be coming out in 2024, I got even more excited because it's basically a bunch of new cards. I think it almost doubles the number of cards that come with the base game. And um, so the important thing is we can take out the attack cards and replace them with non-attack cards uh, instead. So that makes me even more excited. I'm sure some of you have played Ancient Knowledge, and I look forward to hearing what y'all think. But, um, yeah, this Heritage expansion is must-have because it might... Um, it really cement ancient knowledge into my top 10 games for 2023. Time will tell. Um, but I mean, just look at how gorgeous the base game is. This is just a loop from uh, a looping trailer for the base game. Cannot wait for Heritage and can't wait to hear what everybody else has next on the list. Okay, back to everybody else. Man, 
I should have. All right. And you. thank you, Richard, for that ancient knowledge <laughs> heritage. I'm looking forward to it as well because I haven't even played the base game, but I've heard nothing but great things about it. And as Richard was talking about, you know, he uh, liked the fact that the heritage expansion, you can take out the attacky, stabby, stabby cards and bring in a little more friendly thing. And we all know Richard's the biggest care bearer yeah. of them all. So uh, it's, yeah. it seems like uh, this this jibes with uh, what, what his tastes are. So very excited to check that one out. Um, that sounds it, right up his alley. It, it really does, doesn't it? And I, I gotta, I gotta say this, Richard, you look tanned, my friend. You must be enjoying that Mexican sun because you, you got some, uh, you know, got those rosy cheeks, and um, I'm hoping you're enjoying it, um, uh, Richard. So, shout, shout out to you from all of us uh, here on in, in North America. Um, let us move on as I press buttons and make things hopefully work here. Uh, we're yeah. gonna go back to Chris. Back to me, but yeah. before we do, uh, Richard Richard was asking Robert something about the the, the co op expansion oh, for, yeah. mm. for Foundations that's of right. Rome. Thank that's you. Gonna, there are plans for that in Foundations of Metropolis. While we have you here, might as well ask. No. Oh, that's a no. A resounding no. no. Foundations, not at this time. Foundations. Now of let's Metropolis cut to Richard purely, crying in his RV. Yeah. It is purely <laughs> the senator version. It is that base cool. four player game. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Cool, cool. You want it affordable? Great. I gotta cut things out. Uh, there that's yeah, true. That's a very fair point. <laughs> yep. Totally Listen, fair. I don't like co-op, yeah. so that's fine by me. And honestly, <laughs> and honestly, and honestly, for me, it's not a deal. I actually, I for Foundations of Rome, I prefer just the base four-player game. Oh. Actually, yeah. when I play, I don't even play with uh, monuments. I only play the core game. So for me, it's perfectly fine. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I would much rather cut a co-op thing than the, than the trays. Like legitimately, oh, yeah. the trays seriously, being in there, agreed. Like makes yeah. will make such a big difference for this game. So like that's that's music to my ears. Yeah. Uh, all right, so on to my number five then. Yes. Uh, which is I, I'm quite excited about this. My friend Colin. Um, shout out to Colin. Shout out to Colin. Everybody, like, like shout Colin. out Colin. Colin. Shout out Colin. We love Colin. Colin. Um, my friend Colin backed this on Kickstarter, and I I have a show on Room and Board where I look at every almost every game that leaves crowdfunding and board game campaign. I think I covered like 715 last year, um, and and this one was like one of the tops, and I almost missed it. And if it hadn't been for, for I just missed it when I was scrolling through and like finding them. If I hadn't been for my friend Colin, I wouldn't know about it. But I'm so thrilled that I do. This is a game called Cavango. Uh, I don't know if anybody here has heard of it, uh, I but it's it. You've played it? I've played it. Oh, amazing. Cool. Yeah, I, I think this looks really good. Um, it, it's it's a, a it's a sort of a simple engine building, tableau building, drafting game, right? You're going to draft cards, and you're going to put them into your tableau, and the cards will either be resources that you need to, like, entice more animals into your animal sanctuary, or there'll be some action cards that you can do, and there can be some fun things that happen, or you can discard cards and... Uh, and get like money cubes that you can then invest in like climate conservation or your own habitat protection. And all of these things sort of chain together in terms of what cards you're you're going to be getting. I, I, I think it's gonna be just like a really nice drafting game. Um, and and as far as, I, when I was re-looking at some of the cards before this, this stream, I was like, oh, there's some action cards that are like, swap your animal with someone else's animal. I'm like, I don't know if I like that, but I don't mm -hmm. mind that because it, it is drafting, right? you have the choice. Am I going to build this animal and pass this card to someone else? Or do I have to take this hit? Right? Like, I think there's going to be a lot of like really slick, simple, interesting decisions to be made. Uh, lots of cards. And there was a heavy focus on conservation and like environmentalism with this campaign as well. And I always, I love seeing that in, in, in games. Um, and yeah, I just think this one looks really, really solid. I'm really thrilled that um, shout out to Colin. He backed it, so I'm going to get to play it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and and I'm looking forward to to trying it out for sure. So that's that's our collective uh, number five. That's Cavango. Wow, Robert, nice. do, do, is my is my faith misplaced or is it more? No, it's a really good game. <laughs> yeah, cool. A really good game. I've, Did you say yeah, it was card? It. it was pick and pass drafting. Is that what you said? Yeah. Yeah, I love pick and pass drafting. So I do love I. that yeah. mechanic. And then si like simultaneous play too, so Ugh, play quickly. Love right? it. Everybody, love everybody takes it. Boom, you play it. Put it into your sanctuary. There's like three little spots you can hold a card. You can kind of reserve a card mm -hmm. off to the side. Uh -huh. And then there's like collective goals. And then there's also um, you're trying to get get money from your research to like invest in 
yeah. climate protection. And, oh, that's so yeah. cool. It's got my favorite mechanic in a game. No downtime. Yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> that's a great that's a great mechanic. I game. love 100%. it. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This looks really yeah, good. I've I never think... heard of this. Um I don't have a yeah. friend named Colin, so that's why I was sort of out of the loop. Yeah, but that's me neither. Why. Yeah. We but, should all get a friend named Colin. We, we should. Yeah, we really Shout should. out to Colin. Colin Vongo. Colin Vongo. <laughs> Colin Vongo. <laughs> Vongo. It's weird. His it's... last name's Vongo. It's weird. <laughs> Colin Vongo brought the Kavanga. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It didn't uh, work as well as I thought it would. Well, now <laughs> I I'm anticipating this game as well. Good call, um, uh, Colin, and good call, uh, yeah. Chris. Well done. Uh, let's move on to our number four collective. Uh, we're going to go back to Ray uh, for our number four. All right. So this game, uh, you may or may not have seen, I had a public meltdown about this game on Twitter. I was so excited. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> our number four is, uh, this is Wormspan. And if you watched oh, um, yes. previous r and r and r and r and r and r shows, you know, I'm a big Wingspan person. I mentioned it was my favorite Stonemaier game, but I would probably go so far as <laughs> say it's probably top 10 games for me of all time. I am a big Wingspan person. Um, and what's the one thing that can make uh, Wingspan better? Mm, dragons, obviously, clearly. Um, <laughs> and I think truly Wormspan's going to be such a deserving successor to Wingspan. I mean, it hits a lot of the same things that Wingspan did, right? It's got another like notable breakout woman designer. The um, Connie Vogelman is also the designer of Apiary, which was one of my favorite games of 2023. What a tremendous just out of the gate, two designs from Connie, absolutely incredible. Um, and I also think that this game is going to do what Wingspan did, which is bring new people into the hobby who we might otherwise have missed. Because again, it's doing that soft, approachable, really elegant art on top of a theme that is often stereotyped in this industry as being, you know, always like dark and fierce, like dragons are usually hyper realistic or they're really cutesy, which is like what Flamecraft did. It's really, I'm very excited to see this elegant, beautiful, it almost looks like watercolor. I don't know if that's mm -hmm. correct or not, but it has that appearance. And I think that that is going to attract people for whom like the fantasy and dragon themes that we've been putting out as an industry haven't hit for. And I'm very excited for that. That's a very wingspan thing, right? Is to expand, expand the hobby and bring new people into it. And then mechanically, it's this was just announced last week, so I don't have a ton of information on it. Uh, Jamie did put out a three round playthrough of it that I watched. And from my understanding, mm. it has the same three section structured board that uh, Wingspan has. So it's got those three different habitats. You are going to be playing down dragon cards left to right, building up a little bit of an engine. I believe there's still engine building involved in that mechanic. I like thematically what they do more with that in this game, which is you're excavating caves for your dragons to live in left to right, as opposed to just play a bird in a tree. I like that you're like, you're digging out these spots for the dragons to live in. Um, a couple of other notable changes there. Are, you can get more actions, I believe Jamie mentioned, in the form of coins. You can actually change the action economy. Um, there's obviously a bunch of different resources and sort of worker placement style spots you can go to. Maybe worker placement is the wrong term, but there's other actions you can take that'll differ from Wingspan. And the other really exciting thing is it looks like there's going to be more play interaction than there is in base Wingspan. It appears there's like this dragon guild that you can go to and you're going to be moving your little tracker around and you're going to be taking up limited achievement spots so you can be taking bonuses away from other players directly. Whereas I know one of the big gripes people have with Wingspan, at least the base Wingspan, is that there's it's kind of a group solo game. There's not a ton of interaction. I'm hoping that Wormspan fixes that problem, but even if it really doesn't to any substantial degree, it's so pretty. It's got dragons. I lost my mind when this game was announced. I was I was so excited. So that's that's Wormspan again. It's Connie Vogelman's second game with um, Stonemeyer, and it's Wingspan with dragons. What is not to be excited about? Yeah. I am so glad that everyone knows about it now because I've been sitting oh, on knowledge of this for <laughs> months and months and months. <laughs> <laughs> I oh my god, I was so excited. Yeah. This looks that was good. your big announcement. Ray took it. <laughs> <laughs> Ray took it. <laughs> Man, how long were you sitting on that information? I don't this is why no one tells me things early, because I am <laughs> notorious for if you tell me information, I will tell it to anybody. How long have you known about Wormspan? Quite a while. Oof. I'm also notorious for people tell me things and I forget it five seconds later. So no That's... one no one cares that they tell me something. So like there's a fifty percent chance the moment he turns around, he has forgotten I ever said. It. That's awesome. <laughs> and I not and I just don't talk to anyone, so oh. 
well, there you go. <laughs> took a sad turn. Yeah, I've been yeah. sitting on this information for several months. Dude, so, we're, yeah. the, we're the first people that Robert's gotten a chance to talk to for in right? 2024. Right. Why people are always like, I love when Robert's on streams. I'm like, it's the only time I talk to people. <laughs> oh, God. No, that's actually so true for me. I swear to God, 80% of my social interaction is like, on stream and it's really it's done some interesting things to my personality <laughs> i i do want to say before before we move on uh i i really like that ray was like listen you know when people think about dragons they think of realism they think of hyper realistic because <laughs> <laughs> because of, of all the real life dragons that I, that exist oh, all so. those real you dragons. know what i mean i feel like generally speaking we always draw them in this and not always but i feel like right. oftentimes they're depicted know, in this I like know, gritty way, real the yeah <laughs> i actually I the love, realism of dragons yeah. i love the way they've gone with the art on this Same because yes. you're, you're right because dragons often either go into super cute Mm-hmm. Or they go into you know the the yeah. the the, the, the scary, D&D, like, game of the, the like, hyper realistic dragons, yeah. and I <laughs> like that they went with this because dragons themselves tend to unlike wingspan birds are just birds right, and it's very very mass friendly, whereas mm-hmm. dragons can very easily also be perceived of as dirty you know and things yeah. like yep. that and mm-hmm. might absolutely. Yeah. Sometimes, Sometimes as publishers, we shy away from dragons if we're trying to do something that we need to hit. Mm. And I think that they found a good balance here. They found a way to still use dragons as a as a perfect natural evolution of this game, but still make it look approachable to to just anybody as opposed to just fitting a niche. Like when I first heard this was coming, I didn't know I didn't know what it was gonna look like. That what it looked like, I didn't see until the announcement. (laughs) Um and I was worried about what were they going to be going more towards this is the hobby hobby version of Wingspan. Yeah. Oh, it could have definitely gone that way. It could have gone that way very Absolutely. Yep. And yep. I think they, they made a really nice balance here in something that maybe does tweak the game up just a little. Yeah. But still is very when you look at it, it's approachable. Yeah. It feels and, like and it draw you in. Even that cover dragon is very inviting to me when yeah. I look at it. Yeah. Absolutely. And like again, that's one of the things I'm so excited for to see if this does, maybe not on the same scale, but to some degree brings people into the fold, brings people into the hobby because of that art. They're finally seeing like a high fantasy representation game that's not, you know, right. Because honestly, the D&D style of dragons can be really intimidating. It can turn off a lot of mass yeah. market folks. So I really do hope that right. this uh, brings new people into the fold because that's always that's always so exciting. Yeah, yeah, this one, it's it's almost like they took those regular dra- dragons and they put them in a nice photo booth and <laughs> gave them some glamour shots. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Great callback. You want to know why he said that. Well Check done. Out, uh... Click on the links below for the extended edition, links folks. Links below. <laughs> well done. Glamour Chris. shot dragons. That's how I'm uh, referring to Worms fan from here on out. <laughs> nice. Okay, well, uh, before, we're, we're going to, we can talk about this all day long and I still want to know what Colin thinks of Worms fan. But we're going to move on to our oh, number three on the list it's going to be uh coming back to me actually and my number three we actually had the designer on the show a couple of weeks ago folks you're gonna hopefully that gives you a little hint as what i'm most mm. excited about this year most anticipated it's a game called arcs uh from yeah leader yeah, games that and was... yeah we we had cole sure worley on here uh the other day and oh folks it's uh here's amy and maggie going over it right now it's a 4x game with trick taking and it's just and that blows me away right there and you all know the pedigree of uh cole worley all <laughs> the games he's done and um i was totally hyped about this and it was great you can go back and uh find the uh r and r show with cole and he talks about this uh at length so be sure to check that out but basically it's trick taking and 4x i mean that mind-blowing to me and i i cannot wait to play this i love 4x games um i i enjoy trick taking Sometimes trick taking doesn't always hit with me, but I'm telling you, if you if you have trick taking in space, it's probably gonna hit with me, folks. And um, <laughs> I I'm fired up about this. As you can see, you're gonna start in your corner of the galaxy, uh, build ships up, and then you use the multi-use cards, uh, very similar to Root, uh, his big hit, and um, even to a lesser extent, uh, Fort, which was also a multi-use card. Uh, but oh gosh, I cannot wait to try this. Uh, this is, I believe, an early uh, prototype of it, but. We know it's going to be it's going to be a huge one, and um, that's why I'm excited for our number three collectively arcs from Leader Games. Mm-hmm. Yeah, completely I completely agree with this pick. 
I agree. I think uh, Cole, Cole talking about it uh, got me pretty excited, but I was always, I was, <laughs> I was already pretty excited about it. I, I sort of rank all the campaigns that do a million plus um, every year. And when that, yeah. when that year was, was around, it was, it was like number three or number two on the list. It, it mm -hmm. looks really good. Yeah. This, this um, map, it should be mentioned that this is a completely different map than mm -hmm. what the map has actually turned out to be. There's sort of a central area and then there's, there's kind of branching offshoots. Uh, and yeah. we talked about that a little bit with Cole when he was on the show as well. Uh, just the differences and, and the changes. And uh, yeah, this is the map that I was familiar with yep. <laughs> as well from looking at the Kickstarter. And it, it, they function essentially the same, right. but uh, it just, it, it's that, that uh, maneuvering around the solar system in different sectors, right? How, how you represent yeah. that is yep. just uh, represented more effectively to use the board space and get more tiny little ships on it. Uh, in in the current in the current map iteration, but yeah, I think this one's going to be great. Oh yeah, absolutely, cannot wait. So far, yeah. Now this is something that I completely ignored. Um, I've mentioned before, space themes really are don't usually hit for me. I'm not a big space space girly, but mm -hmm. sitting God, I just sitting there slack jawed listening to Cole talk about this for 40 minutes. I was like, this I have to absolutely put this on my buy list for for 2024. The yeah. way he talked about it completely sold me on it. Mm -hmm. And as you can see here, I don't know if, uh, so Kyle Furin is the artist again. He's done all the stuff for Root yep. and Fort. So you got that. It's cute and accessible, but don't let that fool you. It's going to be, um, you know, a, a little heavier game than your uh, gateway, right? So uh, sort of like Root yeah. is. I mean, that Root is basically a war game at its heart, but it's got this super approachable theme right. and uh, an artwork to it. So, yeah, that's our collective uh, number three um, arcs. And we've got a number two from our guest and uh just to make sure oh. i should probably type this out first right robert <laughs> just to make sure um let's see number two i already know what this game is yeah i think i think you know what it is uh i so, know what this game yeah. is yeah let's do it let's <laughs> let's bring it on let's bring it on home this game is near and dear to my heart yes oh i'm so excited so excited same okay our number two collectively and our special guest robert's gonna bring it home Rock is hard, Rock Hard 1977 from <laughs> Devere Games. Oh, more Devere. Listen, I so I have history with this game actually. Oh, please share. That's this you on the almost cover? an Arcane Wonders game. <laughs> <laughs> I had originally had this game. Oh. I was doing this game, and <laughs> I couldn't fit it in the timeline for the next three years. <sighs> and I told Jackie, "Yes, take it to Devere." Oh wow! And I wow, really? that. and I stayed involved a little bit. Like this is a little bit like I have no in in other interest in this game, but I I've stayed involved helping test a little bit and stuff. This game is so exciting to me. So if you don't know, the designer is is Jackie Fox, Jackie Fuchs, um, who has two claims to fame outside yes. of just being an amazing human. Is that she is a three time Jeopardy winner. Oh. What? Yeah, and never played trivia. Was with cool. <laughs> and was the bassist for the band The Runaways. Yes. So for those who what? don't know, that's the band that you know did Cherry Bomb. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Jackie is an amazing human, and Agreed. this is a game that she designed about a little bit based on her life, a little bit of being an actual by gosh rock star. Um, that's sick. So each player is going to be one of these different rockers like eric fairchild um and you're going to be going out in three parts of the day you're going to be you know recording demos you're going to be eventually working your way to playing stadiums but you're also going to be going to these nightclubs and taking part in, in after hours things <laughs> um and it's just so cool and like you see that amp there you've got the little dials on the amp i love that. Uh, where you're actually using an amp and it was like the one thing that she was always like this is the one thing that has to continue no matter what, who takes this game. Um, but I'm just so over the moon excited about this one. And it, at the end of the day, it's a worker placement, you know, mm -hmm. but but you have one worker and it's you. And during the day phase, you you place on one spot. And the night phase, you will pick a new spot. And then the after hours, um, all working up your your songs, your rep, your, ch your chops on how you play. Uh, recording demos, hiring a manager, but you're going to be living the life of a rock star. But f I forget what the, the time, I think it's over a period of one year. Um, you even have to do like yep. indie promotion and stuff. So it's just so cool. And as this, the, the color palette is this whole 70s vibe to it. Um, the yeah. characters are so cool. So diverse. Um, 
and yeah, I'm th- I'm over the moon excited about this one. I this cool. is hands down. I know at the start I said, you know, it's funny. This is a year that everything is is that I'm really excited. Actually, technically, is mine. This was the game that I was like, no questions. This is the game I'm super excited about this. Cool. Year. Awesome. This is going I, to be a blast. I think people are going to love it, and it just having having jack behind jackie behind it because this was this was a labor of love for her like yeah um and the art is amazing i forget who they got to do it but each each piece is is this hand-drawn piece um that she did i think i think she did it i think she did an oil or watercolor something but she did them all as one solid art piece like in the oh. real world as opposed to digital art i love that um, very cool yeah, I am super excited. I think this one's coming out at Gen Con this year. Okay, cool. Wow. I just want to turn the little amp knob. I so know, I, I the know. tactile appeal of that yes. is so powerful. And Funny I love... story, when she built the prototypes, uh-huh. she yeah. wanted to make those knobs still, and she couldn't find anything, so she painted the tops of chapstick markers and glued them. Oh, that's clever. <laughs> that's that's very clever. clever. I love nice. it. You know, nice. my, my favorite great. my favorite little bit about those knobs is each one goes to eleven. So those of us yep. who yeah. love Spinal Tap, that's a nice little mm-hmm. uh, little shout out. there, little Easter egg. And according and to I, this, I uh, Jackie was it. a four time Jeopardy champion. Four so, time, four yeah. time. Wow. Yes. Oh my god! Um, Amazing. What's also great is when you want to do, and we'll determine how family friendly this sounds. Uh, when you want to take an extra action, you have to consume candy. Aha. Okay. <laughs> That's clever. That is clever. That's awesome. Oh, hilarious. Yeah, because uh, it's, everybody um, loves candy and it gives you the, yeah. you know, the the reason the power to friendship. keep on the power I, to keep yes. going. Just to answer, I do know that every one of the characters is inspired by somebody that Jackie knows. Like oh, based cool. on somebody. Now, oh, whether or not sick. she'll ever reveal all of them. Yeah. But yeah, this this is going to be an amazing game. I'm That's, I'm really excited. I cannot. So wait. that was you wait. on the cover. Is it what was. You're <laughs> this is the special announcement. There we go. Turns out that's my butt on the cover. What? That's yeah. a special worldwide announcement. <laughs> there it is, right there. Oh, that's so cool. I. I I just real quick I don't know if you can share this and if you can't that's totally fine but you said you you told her to take it to Devere was there like well, more so Devere, Devere had talked to her a little bit okay uh, it was Pax last they moved quick um, yeah it was PAX I'm just always curious year. about the behind the scenes it, like, it was geez, Pax so. last year and Jackie was actually in my booth working for me yeah um, I brought her in and um, I just kept telling her look I love this game I want to make it but I. I our pipeline is so full. Sure. I've sure, got yeah. I've got the next three years planned out. And I'm like, the best I could tell you. And she's like, well, Devere's interest. I'm like, take it over there. Yeah. And she started walking out of the booth with a little oh. crush. I'm like, but I love that though. Get out like, and take it to Devere. I love stories like that you know, where <laughs> the industry kind of I don't know. We help each other out, right? Like you could have said, you could have like offered her a lot of, like given her a deal or whatever to make her wait several years. But I love that the the longer I work in this space, the more I hear those little stories that just give me, that just really warm my heart of people just keeping like, you know, watching each other's backs and then looking out for each other. And, and if that was the right call for her, you told her to go do that. Even if that wasn't, you know, she has worked on that game for so long. I met her, I had met her, playing a prototype of it like a dice tower west Mm -hmm. so way earlier in that year and she clearly had poured so much love into this yeah Yeah. and after all that you know as much as i loved it telling her that you know look it's going to be three years for me i I couldn't do that to her she's she's so nice and it's such a great game i i and so a publisher that could get that game out rather quickly, I think, served yeah. it better. And honestly, I think Devere's done a really, really good job with it. Um, there were even things that I actually was concerned with the the game that I've now seen, because I've got to see the new rules and everything. And I think Devere has done an amazing job with the with the, the rest of the development working with her on it. That's, so That's cool. fantastic. That's so cool to hear. Thanks for, I mean, people thanks for really, putting this on the really list. I had never heard of this. Yeah. And, um, and, and yeah. the like the backstage cards, I mean, not the backstage, the after hours cards are yeah. so cool because they all have little stories based on her life. 
So That's like awesome. it might be that you've done this thing, but she's got a whole story behind it. Yeah. Like, why that? And you know, it, it borders on some of it borders on that. It, it gets to the line. That's the cool part. Seventies rock can be hasn't hasn't seventies rock culture hasn't aged well. Right. Sure. Yep. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but I love how they've done with this game. They've taken it right to the edge. And they're like, all right, we're, mm-hmm. gonna, we're not going to cross that line, but we're going to get you all the way there. You want to fill in the blank? That's that's up to you. You want to cool. do that? You want to take that? You want to eat that candy? That's on you. <laughs> <laughs> they ate a lot of candy back it, in the 70s, I'll tell you. Um. <laughs> is, there an op- is there an option to have a nice uh, cup of tea and go to bed early to get an extra action? Does he get there, a good night's it, sleep? You can't. You can actually in the night. Go to bed early so that really? way you yeah. can get something. You can go first the next round. Wow, that is an, just act an action you can take to go to bed early. That is That's great. so cute. That's great. Um, yeah, just a, a quick story. Like, I remember uh, on Twitter, like Jackie was sharing while she was developing just photos and like thoughts about the process. So it's really cool to see, you know, very early on what she had in mind. I, I you know, I don't, I haven't touched, I haven't seen any of the later uh, iterations of this, but it seems like it stayed true to her vision of what she wanted and uh, very much did. Yeah. And I I love that for her. She, yeah, she is a wonderful person. I've been very fortunate to uh, meet her a couple of times and um, I'm I'm, very excited to see what she does next. Yeah. She is working on other games. So I'm, I'm really, with this being her first official design out there, I'm really excited to see what she does. Yeah. And it, and it's such a cool story. You know, she's had such a life too. Like her life is poured into this game. Yep. And she's done so many things. I think, like right now, her main job is like an entertainment lawyer. Yeah, yeah, she's a full on lawyer. Yeah, and and so like it, it just shows, like you know, if you're designing, a, if you're somebody out there designing a game, go mm-hmm. for it. Yeah, she yeah. she's wonderful. Uh, another quick thing, I got to share this. I play games on Board Game Arena, and sometimes I'll play the game Hardback with her. Um, Talk about someone that has a great vocabulary. I'm like sitting there. Yeah, I got a 10 point word. She's like, yeah, I just scored 50 points. The game's over. It's like, great. Great playing with you, Jackie. She is ridiculously she, smart. Yeah, she's so super smart. And I'm so happy for her to uh, get this game out there uh, in, in the in the wild uh, real soon. Um, let's move on to our number one. Uh, it's going back to Mexico with Richard. And let's see Mr. Tan, what he's got for us for number one. All right, that is a phenomenal group of games. Uh, Chris, I have to admit, I don't know hardly anything about Kavango, but it must have made a big impact on you when it was crowdfunding last year. So, yeah, on my wish list, it now goes also. And uh, Ray, oh, Wormspan, yeah, you are not alone there. Honestly, if I could have talked about it publicly, I would have put it on my top 10 uh, most anticipated of the year. Uh, but uh, you know, it was under embargo at that point. But yeah, uh, very, very excited for this. Love to see the changes to the core Wingspan formula. Um, Rel Arcs, yeah. Folks, I challenge anybody to go watch the extended edition of the previous r and r show where we had Cole Worley on for the uh, uh, best games of 2023, and he did an interview with Chris and Ray and Ruel talking about the behind the scenes, the development of this game, and what it attempts to do. I challenge you to watch that interview and not come away wanting to play this game. This is, I did not think this was my kind of game, but I want to try it too. And Robert, uh, Rock Hard 1977. Uh, yeah, I am right there with you. Devere is going to have an amazing 2024. Already on this list, they've got two games from two different folks. And then on my top 10, I had another one. And they have even more games coming out. And man, the pedigree of this game, the uh, just the backstory of the designer. Uh, after I first heard about this game, I started reading up on her and... I, I, I cannot wait. I am very, very excited. But, folks, as excited as all those are, we're now going to talk about number one. And remember, folks, I've already done my number one on um, the previous video. Links are down in the show notes. I'm telling you about my number one most anticipated expansion for 2024. And uh, considering everything out there, that has got to be New Frontier Starry Rift. And, oh my goodness, folks, uh, this actually is a video of my original run-through I filmed for New Frontier half a decade ago. 
Five years I have been waiting for this expansion. And if you actually you go back and watch my final thoughts for the original New Frontiers, my one big complaint was, boy, this needs more content. And finally, after many, many delays, mostly because of the pandemic and all of that, we are going to be getting a big box with a ton of new planets, objectives, all kinds of stuff. Tom Lehman has really delivered the goods for what was uh, what basically uh, Race for the Galaxy, the board game. And for my money, uh, New Frontier is better than Race for the Galaxy, and the only thing it needed is more content, and it's getting it. And while the wait has been painful, one good thing comes out of it. Uh, they had extra time, so they decided to implement an entire solo campaign you can play through as well. Kind of based on the system from the uh, solo gameplay they did for Jump Drive, you know, which is basically for the Galaxy Express. And so that is really awesome too. If it had come out, what, uh, three or four years ago like it was supposed to, it probably wouldn't have that, but now it does. So even more people will get to see why for my money anyway, um, New Frontier eclipses Race for the Galaxy. And those are strong words I know. And uh, that's it, folks. I'm going to throw back to the gang. But before I do, remember, uh, follow the links down in the show notes or hit that eye in the top right corner of the screen and you can go to the extended playthrough where uh, there was a lot of fun discussion with Robert in the pre-show and in the post-show. Uh, we're going to be talking about some just missed it. I've got a few more expansions. I've got to let you know about folks. So be sure to head over to the extended edition of the show once you're finished here. All right, gang, back to you. Okay. And yeah, New Frontiers, always enjoy that. I, I love the whole line of uh, Tom Lehman's games, Race for Galaxy, Roll for the Galaxy, New Frontiers, Jump Drive, and getting the new expansion, as Richard says, I think that's going to give that game yeah, again, again, and again, uh, for those of who enjoyed it, give, breathe new life into the game. Um, and I, I'm excited for that one. I've always enjoyed all those games. I probably Roll for the Galaxy is my favorite because I love Chuck and Dice, but um, New Frontiers, another, another solid entry. So uh, that is our number one. We had hope you all had a great time watching all of our games. Don't forget to, as Richard said, click on the show notes below for the extended edition where we talk about all kinds of stuff. And uh, Chris, you got uh, anything else for us here? Well, that's true. I, I want to give a shout out to our sponsor, uh, Floodgate Games. And I figure uh, I want to throw an audible at everybody before oh. we leave. I, I want to yeah. get everybody's... Uh, Robert, you, I guess you can start or I can start us off. Uh, what's everybody's favorite Floodgate game? Uh, to, to say thank you to our sponsors for, for doing this. I, I like doing this for our sponsors because we get to hear yeah. chime in. We, we had Cole yeah. um, and our I forget our other guest who, who we had when Arcane Jamie. Wonders was Jamie. sponsoring it. Yeah, Jamie. Jamie, talk yeah. about their their Jamie top, killed uh, me in that episode. He made <laughs> the game that's not mine anymore. Yeah. Oh, no. oh, that's right. Well, we won't be doing that. We won't be doing that with Floodgate because uh, oh, I got a, I got the list here of uh, we got Sagrada, we got everything ever, we got Kites, Decorum, Fog of Love, Blitzkrieg, Caesar, Dogfight. I'm just on their uh, on their website right now. Uh, Holy Festival of Colors, uh, Dome Crushers. I haven't never heard of that one. It says it's sold out. Three Laws of Robotics, Vivid, Vivid Memories, uh, Epic Resorts, Vault Wars, Legacy Gears of Time. Uh, out of those. Out of floodgates, I, I mean, this this might be this might be a a pick across the board. So I'm going to say it first. Uh, I I mean, I just love Sagrada. Sagrada's such a hit. Yeah, for me. Agreed. Um, so like, I I'd say that would probably be my 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 top floodgate floodgate game or the the games that 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 are on their website currently. Robert, how about you? Due to Daryl being one of my best friends, I believe <laughs> I'm obligated to say Sagrada, which yep. Sagrada's <laughs> great. I love it, but I actually think it's Fog of Love. Oh yeah, that nice. was my favorite fog game, and I know that wasn't originally their game, and they they got it in the last couple of years. I yeah. think of their catalog, Fog of Love is my favorite. I just always loved that game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice. But you ready? Yeah, uh, yeah. I'll 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 follow that up by saying I was probably gonna pick Fog of Love because I also I I love um, the concept of that. I've been <laughs> shouting yeah. from the rooftops for years that I want more like relationship based board games like mm -hmm. kind of rom-com dating sim like i just feel like that's such a fun theme for a game fog love is great i find it a little bit hard to get to the table so i will mm -hmm. go with decorum instead which hits um. a lot of the same 
makes my brain light up in a similar way. You can do this sort of narrative storytelling, obviously not as deep as you do with Fog of Love, which is almost like a TTRPG. Mm-hmm. Um, Decorum, you can still create these little personalities for your character. And I love just being able to slam the tail and be like, I hate that lamp. I've never <laughs> hated a lamp more than I hate that one lamp that you just put there. That's the way I play Decorum. It's yeah. a lot of fun. It is, again, you know, you're, you're trying to cohabitate with someone and you are trying to fill up your house with these various objects and you each have your own desires for what you want in the house but it's passive aggression a passive aggression you can't actually say hey i actually don't like green lamps all you can do is say you either like or don't like people's changes to the house so it's effectively like a deduction puzzle game with this yep. fun relationship role-playing aspect to it love cool. i love lamp yeah i love I lamp <laughs> <laughs> well, i hate lamp so we can't win together lamp. robert <laughs> yeah. um my pick is also sagrada but i do want to shout out holy festival of colors i think it's a really neat oh, abstract yeah. 3d game if you ever want to play 3d <laughs> chess there's your chance to do it it's a really cool, mm, cool. Uh, bit of set collection as well very and talk about table presence that thing is gorgeous on the table okay. i'm going to give them one bonus oh yeah uh, they're their most underrated game for me that I really love that I think does not did not get enough attention is Cosmic Colonies. Mm. Oh. That game is is way better than people think it is. It, it went really under the radar, but it's yeah. actually a really nice game. Cool. Um, cool. I really I'll have to try it out. I haven't played I it. I think yeah. that one doesn't get any any notice at all. It just it had a, a Kickstarter, I think, and then just kind of fell to the wayside quick. But I think that's a game that if you haven't played from them, you should absolutely give it a shot. Oh, will do, because I have not. Nice. Great. Yeah, awesome. I haven't either. Cool. I think I even might have skipped over it in their list as I was just blazing through, because I was like, I, I haven't heard of that one. Maybe <laughs> I won't say it. Let's go check it out. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you for that. And uh, we want to thank our guest, uh, Robert uh, Geislinger from Arcane Wonders. Appreciate you. And friends, be sure to click those links below for all the good stuff where you can find us. Uh, that was uh, that screen. I'm going to go to this screen here, the outro. We'll talk to you later. Thanks again to our sponsor, Floodgate Games. And we'll till next time, we'll see you later. So long.